H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. All right. Okay, I hope you guys are able to see my screen now. Okay, so there's a question coming in. Can we use Python for uh, for test automation? So my answer is it depends on what kind of application you want uh, uh, you are working on. Okay, so I know that uh, if you are um, having some sort of Java related stuff, you can automate using Java, obviously. And you can learn Selenium for doing some sort of automation as well, which is pretty much related to Java. All right, so that's all I can say right now. And um, okay, so I was kind of going through uh, these slides here. I was talking about that my name is Jaram, and I've got almost 14 plus 15 years of experience. And these are the platforms like Java G2E, and these are the domains I've worked on. Okay, and uh, I will not talk about H2 Infosys today. Um, I mean, I think you guys might have done some research on that as well. And as I said, this is not a kind of a demo session, so I'm not going deep inside any of those topics here. Okay. And I hope everyone of you must be aware of a couple of websites like uh, Dice, Career Builder, Monster, and Indie. Um, and a lot more will have come out as well. Okay. And uh, so I would. Kind of go through this particular slide in, in depth a little bit to give you understanding about uh, what all things we are going to learn in this entire session okay so i'll take a few minutes of time and then we will go over what all things we have discussed in the previous sessions and uh, then we will continue from there in, as i said in a very slow pace initially because a lot of people who are coming in they might be having troubles in uh, figuring out what's going on okay so uh, for all the no old folks, uh, when I say old folks who have joined last class and I've instructed them to install a few of the softwares, uh, we can have, uh, have a discussion over there so that people who are pretty new or let's say one day old, they can at least figure out or understand like what all softwares you have installed, okay? So if you guys have any problems installing and understanding uh, the previous uh, class, a software which has to be installed do let me know we can have a discussion and so that will be kind of helpful for others also okay all right so uh, coming on to the course objective uh, these are the whole topic we are going to learn uh, well not not less we, there are a lot of other hidden topics also which is which i have not added out here okay now this is our core java from uh, so when i say core java it's all about uh, uh, understanding what is a programming language doesn't matter what programming language it is you can uh, pick up uh, i mean th the basics for what we're going to learn you can use it in any, any programming language okay now we will particularly understand about how java works um, what are the uh, syntaxes of java how to write um, hello world program how to write a, a object oriented program what are the different libraries you have uh, we cannot touch base all the libraries, but we will go through how to use a library. Okay, so it's it's part of it. Um, but again, what is a library? It's like uh, if you want to read a book, what do you do? You just go to a library. You don't buy a book. Technically, you if if a, if a book costs pretty uh, pretty costly, uh, what do you do? You basically go to a library, borrow it, read it, give it back. Right. So pretty much same thing. Uh, Java has got a lot of bunch of libraries. We can use it. We'll talk about those things as well. So uh, this is all about core Java. We'll understand, right? As I said, uh, if I go back to the next slide here, a little bit, these are the things we're going to understand, like object-oriented concepts, multi-threading, string handling, collections, uh, input and output operations, generics, exception, JDBC reflections, and there are a lot more. Also, as I said, um, uh, it's again not possible for me to write everything in a single slide, though. Okay, so. Uh, and for the new folks also, like as, is, uh, as my old folks knows, 
that this session is almost going to be for almost 45 hours. Okay, so it's like three days a week, uh, pretty much minimum one hour of session. It might go to one and a half hours, depending on the situation scenarios and likewise. Uh, but yeah, pretty much we will cover up 45 hours of class. Okay, and out of 45 hours of class, we would pretty much dedicate uh, almost 18 to 20 classes only on the course of uh, functionality because that's very important. I feel like uh, if you understand the core Java concepts, understanding all the other concepts are pretty much easy. Okay. So this is more or less on the core concepts and uh, in and around there are so many advanced concepts like uh, uh, we, when, you, when we talk about the client server application or in general, when you, when you want to Google something, you open up a browser, Google it, say google.com, type in something and enter, right? So what is that you're doing? You are sending some request to some server actually. So if you guys are pretty new uh, to um, this distributed application, I mean, we every day, every now and then we use it, but maybe we do not know some of the terminologies, right? So we are basically using some sort of, sort of distributed application, right? So when I say distributed application, in your browser, you type in anything, send enter, you get a response from somewhere, correct? It's not in your laptop or in your machine. I know it's something like if you um, if you feel hungry, you know that uh, you have rice, you have some salads and all in the fridge, you go and get it from there. So it's kind of a local, okay? But again, if you want to if you want to buy some pizza from McDonald's or let's say Domino's, what do you do? You basically order it, make a phone call, right? And then someone brings it uh, brings it to you. So uh, maybe think about Domino's as kind of a server. You send a request you get a response back. So we are going to pretty much talk about those features in this concept, okay? So we'll see how to develop those kind of uh, programs using HTML, Java, JSPs, and Apache Tomcat. So these are kind of a server side technologies. Uh, we will see how to use it, uh, how to program it, and likewise, okay? So we need to have this as a, ha have this as a must in order to get onto this one, okay? So, uh, there are a few other things like we'll talk about IntelliJ Eclipse. These are the IDs which we are going to use it. And uh, there are other frameworks like Hibernate. Uh, in particular, we'll talk about something as a Spring JPA. Uh, we will have a touch base on what is the database all about. We'll, we'll talk about Postgres or MySQL or uh, Oracle database. Or there are many different kind of databases, okay? so. We can, you can choose any one, um, but I would recommend using Postgres. Uh, that's what we're going to use it. And there are times we can even use something known as an inbuilt memory, in, inbuilt database also, in-memory database. Okay, well, I'll talk about those things as well, okay? And then um, once we talk about Hibernate or data, database-related concepts, we will move on to something known as Spring or Spring Boot. Uh, those are two different things, uh, but Spring Boot has Spring inside this. Okay, it's like uh, a, a house has got a, a bathroom, right? Um, likewise, Spring Boot has, inside Spring Boot, you have got Spring. So basically, we'll talk about Spring, and then we will understand what is the Spring Boot all about as well. Okay, so these are pretty much very important frameworks because uh, uh, you would use a lot even though you, you are, if you're a Java developer, you would use Spring Framework a lot in your applications for sure. Okay, so uh, once we finish up this Spring or Spring Boot, this by itself has got many different verticals, many different modules. We'll try to touch base uh, the important uh, modules inside this. Like, let me just take you to the one of the slide which talks about Spring and whatnot. So here we go. So when we talk about Spring. These are the different modules we have it. Okay, uh, we will try to touch base every single module. We'll try to understand uh, why we have so many different modules. Also, okay, so it, it's pretty interesting to know like why do we have all these things. So there's a question coming in. What is the what is the IDE that we need to download in Java version? So IDE you have to download IntelliJ, and Java version you can choose the latest one. Uh, you can you can take uh, if you want uh, JDK 13, but uh, you can take the latest ones also. Okay, but I would recommend because I have JDK uh, 
um, 11, right? Yeah. So we are not going to uh, just see all the features, which is entirely impossible. So JDK 11 is also okay. JDK 13 is also okay. So, but I believe if you just Google it saying uh, JDK download, you will get the latest one. So it's okay for uh, you to download the latest one also. Okay. But IDE just install uh, IntelliJ. If you are inclined towards Eclipse, if you know something about it, I have no problem, but all my programs and all I would be doing it using IntelliJ itself. Okay. All right. So um, from Spring Boot, Spring to Spring Boot, we will move on to web services. Um, this is also kind of a client to server side technology, pretty much similar to what we have it here, but slightly different objective of why do we have a web service. Right, so there are kind of different kind of web services like uh, top down, uh, bottom up uh, approaches, different approaches. So we will be using it. Different kind of web services like SOAP based, uh, RESTful services. Uh, we will also talk about those things also. Okay, so uh, pretty much testers they use these web services a lot more because they would do a lot of testing, by the way, uh, uh, for different external applications. Right, uh, because these days everything is based out of microservices. Right, so we will also talk about what is a microservices. Uh, it's basically uh, two different applications talking to each other using web services. Uh, it's it's well, pretty pretty early to talk about it, but yeah, uh, we have a concept known as uh, microservices uh, in which you mostly use web services in order to communicate with each other. Okay, we'll talk about it. Likewise, so there are some tools also like SOAP UI, which uh, you would be using it for, uh, what is that, uh, testing a web service, right? So there are different tools also, but we would uh, pretty much use uh, SOAP UI. You can also use something as a Postman, which is browser-based. Uh, this you have to download it and install it in your machine, right? We will talk about uh, these, how to install it. Well. At the time when we are here, you should be all prominent uh, enough to understand like how to install softwares and likewise. Okay. Now there are a couple of other uh, frameworks like Log4j, uh, JUnit. Um, we will be using GitHub for uh, version control. Like I will be, we will be using a, cl a cloud-based uh, location wherein I would be checking in files. I would be requesting you guys to uh, create some. Uh, create your own login, create some repositories, have your own repository created, checking your files. So all those activities, we will be doing it as part of this session as well. So it's kind of a, it's going to be a day-to-day -day daily activity. You don't have to memorize anything. I will make sure that you understand every bits and pieces of these things also, okay? So talking about a database, uh, we have got a tool also like a SQL Oracle developer. Uh, this is also need to download and install it in your machine in order to use it. We'll talk about that, how to how to use it likewise, okay? So after talking about core Java, advanced like uh, server-side technology, Spring Boot, Hibernate, uh, web services, we've got something of the Apache Maven also. It's kind of a build tool. Um, then last, we'll talk about ActiveMQ, right? So this is one important feature also. Okay, so well, everything is important out here, believe me or not, okay. Uh, but yeah, this is one important feature wherein you can do some sort of asynchronous communication. Okay, so people do asynchronous communication on, on a day-to-day -day basis. You send a message to your friend, right? Uh, sometimes your friend is not active, maybe he's out of range, but you still send a message. The moment your friend comes online, he or she receives a message, right? So it's kind of an asynchronous communication. You make a phone call to someone, no one, your friend does not respond. What do you do? You send a voicemail, a voicemail. Then after some time, the voicemail has been read by someone, right? Likewise, you do a day-to-day, day -day, you do a synchronous communication, but we will see how to do that using something known as ActiveMQ uh, and JMS, okay? So, and uh, everything out here, right? Web services, ActiveMQ, uh, and Hibernate, we will all use Spring itself. So Spring is everywhere. So understanding Spring uh, is one of the core objective. It 
uh, of any developer, by the way. So they should they should they should understand what is Spring all about, by the way. Okay. So I'll make sure that you guys understand those things and make sure yourself pretty much more comfortable in uh, in writing some Spring code and at least understanding what it is. Right. If you understand the basics, everything follows along with. Right. So that's all pretty much I had for or have for today on the on this particular slide. Uh, I'll not go deep inside other slides also. Uh, but let's talk about what all things we did in the previous session and uh, what I'm expecting from you guys. Uh, and also, I'll just take you to one of the screen uh, wherein for the enrollment also. So uh, if you guys have joined for the first time, uh, you can enroll to my session. As you can see that we have already started the session. Um, and uh, it's it's good time for you to enroll it. If you have any questions, concerns, you can reach out to me at jrampodichtukinfluences at gmail.com or regarding enrollment process, you can reach out to this phone number 770-777-1269 or to these email IDs. So pretty much you should be having all the email IDs because you should have got some emails from someone to attend this session, by the way, right? So I'm not worried about these email IDs or phone numbers. But yeah, so this is my email ID. You can reach out to me um, using this ID, okay? And one other thing I mentioned probably I should even add it to some of my slides that we will also have a Slack channel, okay? Uh, and uh, every single developer, well, I will notify you as a developer. Um, so you guys will be part of a Slack channel and you guys can have communication. I, I, I usually communicate using uh, Slack channel. So let me just tell you uh, S L A C K, right? So if you guys have never used Slack, it's time for you to use it because it's hot in the market. People use this for uh, chatting and whatnot. Uh, but just to give you a heads up, we have these uh, Slack channels right now, right? Uh, I've got about 32, 30. One blah blah blah. So you yours will be batch thirty three, and uh, you can see that all my students for that particular batch they are part of it. Okay, and in general uh, you can see also um, where is that? I mean I've got different topics, different channels. You can uh, post some question in those channels and likewise, right? So this is one of the things which you'd be using it on a day to day basis. I would uh, suggest you to download it, install it in your own uh, like. You, you install WhatsApp, right? Likewise, you also install Slack. Join in if you have any any notification I have to give it to you, you guys can uh, instantly get it, right? If you have any questions, you can just type in in the Slack channels. Anyone uh, can uh, respond to you or otherwise I can also respond to you. So it's, it's pretty open. Uh, you can have an open uh, discussion forum also uh, to, to get started, right? Okay, so uh, not to talk about much about uh, some miscellaneous things. Let's get on to the browser. So if you guys have any questions, folks, please do not hesitate to ask me. I would recommend not to uh, unmute yourself. I would recommend to for you to type in uh, and ask me any kind of questions. But if you still feel that, or if I feel that you are not able to understand any kind of uh, statements which I'm giving it, then uh, I would I would unmute you uh, by myself, okay? So, all right, so uh, what I was talking about in the previous session is to what are softwares to be installed, right? So I think everyone knows how to Google it. Um, there's no question about it. Now, in order to download or install some softwares, uh, I would just say, let's say Java download, right? So as we are going to talk about Java, so you just say Java download. So this is where you kind of go to the very first link. Just say Java for you download today. So just click on this. I will ask you for some uh, uh, agreement and stuff and all. So you just say agree and, and it starts downloading. Okay. So if it asks you for an ID or, or a user ID and password, just go ahead and create one for you. Okay. It's, it's pretty straightforward by the way. All right. So it is. Um, recommended version 8. So it is recommending me to use the version 8. 
I don't know, they have some logic to figure out, but uh, I will pretty much download the latest one. Okay, so I already have downloaded the latest one, by the way. So there's another way of doing it. So I would just go back and just say JDK download. Okay, JDK download. JDK in the sense, the Java development kit. So I hope it will take you to the same screen. No, there's a different screen out here, okay? So all you have to do is uh, click on this JDK download and depending on your version also. Now, the latest JDK is JDK 14, by the way. So you can download this, install it in your machine, by the way, okay? So I was talking in the previous session how to download it. Uh, depending on you are using Linux or Mac or Windows, you'd be clicking on these respective softwares. Okay, so for Windows, I would uh, uh, click on this one. This is an exe file. It's pretty easy. Download this. Once it downloads, double click on that and just follow with your next, next, next. Okay, so downloading uh, and installing JDK is pretty straightforward. All right, so I'll just kind of copy this and paste it here. So this is uh, sent to all. Okay, so there's a question coming in. Um, no, sent to all, right? I think I've sent it to everyone. Sent to all, yeah. So first time downloading Slack channel, how do I find you? Well, uh, Nick, actually what happens is uh, when I create the channel, I haven't created the channel yet. I would be sending a link to everyone. Okay, so you guys just don't need to follow that link and automatically you'll be, you'll be in my channel. All right, so you have to wait for it. Uh, I'm not rushing on that because we are in the very initial session right now, right? So this is what I mentioned to download the JDK uh, software or Java software. And uh, pretty much we are all good, right? And the next thing which I recommended to download is IntelliJ. So just taking Google it, google.com, IntelliJ download, right? So this is what we have it. Uh, it basically belongs to JetBrains. And uh, if you are a student, you can download the ultimate uh, edition. If you are not, then you can kind of download the community edition also. Okay, so most of the programs, what we would be doing, this is sufficient for us to do it. Okay, so I would recommend you guys to uh, download this community edition and use it, right? Okay, so this is also pretty straightforward. Download it, double click on that, install it, that's it, All right? Pretty straightforward, guys. Uh, now, just a question, uh, did my previous, I mean, when I say the guys who have already enrolled and joined the previous session, did you guys get a chance to download these softwares and install it in your machine? Was there any problems from anyone? If you have already installed it, just type in yes. Um, and if you have, if you are, you are trying to install and you have problems, you can just ping me and say, got problems. Okay. I'll just uh, give you guys a minute, not a minute, sorry, maybe 10 seconds. And then I can move on. The process of installing. Okay. And how about others? Did you guys get a chance to install these softwares? Okay, uh, all right. So if if you guys can do it now also, it is, it is pretty good enough, uh, do it. Now again, uh, I think uh, everyone should be having 64-bit operating system, so it should not be any problem at all, right? But, so I would give you some time for you to install that if you have not installed it. If not, we can get started, okay? All right. Um, I think it's it's if you guys are installing it now, it'll take its own force of action to um, install it. So I, I can kind of get moving. So these are the two things which I told or recommended to install it. So the second thing is uh, you would be, you would be using something known as a command prompt or a terminal. Okay, so if you do not know anything about terminal or command prompt, 
this is what it is all right uh, in windows you would be seeing if you just uh, click on your windows key and type in command prompt this is pretty much same window you would be looking out for okay something is a black or a blue one uh, until unless until you open up a PowerShell in Windows, you would see something as a blue screen. Otherwise, it's pretty much going to be the same thing. Okay. So, if you have not done it any time before in your lifetime, click on the Windows key now, right, and then start typing command C O M M A N D. You would see uh, something as a command prompt. Okay. Or the, there's a shortcut, uh, something as a Windows key and R at the same time, and just type in CMD. The two options you have it to do it. So this is kind of a, a command prompt which op opens up. Okay, so once you install Java in your machine, just type in Java hyphen version. It will tell you that, uh, sorry, I have got 13 version, not even 11, I've got version 13 here, okay. So it will tell you that which version of Java you have installed. Right, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, and uh, you can give some Java commands, Java C. So when you see something is happening, something you're able to see, uh, then you feel that, okay, everything is good. Okay, so uh, make sure that you download and do give all these commands like Java, simple Java, right? And Java C. Okay, so there are a couple of other options which uh, we are not going to talk about all these things. You don't mostly will use it, but yeah, there are other options which you can use it as part of the command line argument. Right. Uh, I think the voice was pretty low, right? Uh, is the voice pretty good now? I just realized that uh, the speaker was lying down sorry the the mic was lying down um but i believe yes the voice would be pretty good right now all right um okay so i would i would suggest all of you to do that if you have not done it okay and the next thing what we saw was how to write a simple java program right um so I would recommend what to do something like this, right? In your machine, uh, create a folder. Any folder wherein, wherein you can start writing your programs. So in my case, I've created something known as a folder known as batch 33. Okay. Now, uh, maybe someone, does anyone have Anytime you use command prompt, guys. Where are you typing in the black screen? What software is that? Okay, so uh, this is a command prompt or a terminal, right? So technically you would not use it all the time, but it's good to know about what is this software all about, right? So that's the reason I was saying, just type in, in your command, uh, in your, if you're using Windows, uh, just press on your Windows key and leave it. Then you would see a prompt. Just type in C O M M A N D. Just type the one which I'm giving it here. Okay. Just try that, and you would see that it'll it'll pop up to a particular software, and you can install it. So it's something like if I come in here and say C H E S S Chess, right? So I know there's a software known as Chess in my in my machine. If I just click on this, I can I can open that up. Likewise, in your Windows. Uh, I don't know why I'm saying, but uh, I'm just saying it so that everyone is, are on the same page. So in the Windows uh, machine, Windows key, I mean, I cannot show you that, and just type in command, all right? So it'll, it'll bring you to the same screen, by the way, okay? Pretty much similar to this uh, screen, what you are seeing it. Now in this, uh, I typed few commands, Java, but, in order to come to this particular software, it's a command prompt or a terminal in case of your Linux based operating system. Okay, you have to first install Java. 
you don't need to install IntelliJ for that, but you have to install Java for that. But again, this software is different. I mean, even though you have not downloaded a Java, you can still open this up. Okay, maybe I would like to do something else. I would like to know like uh, uh, what different uh, files and folders do I have? So usually what you do is if you want to kind of open up, uh, let's say, uh, any folder, right, in, in your Windows operating system, what do you do? You use something known as a Windows Explorer, right? Now, uh, Windows Explorer are used when you want to visualize things, right? But usually developers, they don't um, need to see all these, uh, let's say, if you have a music, uh, music file, you want to open it up. What do you do? You come to a folder, right? And then you double click that particular file and then it opens up, correct? But do developers, they, what do they do is they don't usually go to this uh, Windows Explorer or in case of your Mac, it is, it is a finder. They do it everything using command line itself. You, whatever you can do it here, you can do it here also, but this is more visual, right? I can say, okay, I want to see in a different uh, format. I can see now in a different format, right? I can see now with some sort of thumbnails here. But here, everything is pretty straightforward and clean. So let's say, for instance, uh, I go to the downloads, right? If you click on the downloads, I have downloaded many different things. So I can see all these things out here. But if I want to do it from the command line, what I have to do, I can uh, go to something known as the downloads, right? See this? You can see the same thing, what you see it here here as well so join so where is my join so this is the join apache active mq where is my apache active mq this is the one okay out here so if you see the count everything will be the same here the only thing is this is your uh, you are able to visualize it using some sort of windows explorer or finder but here it's like uh, it's like pretty simple file names but here if you see the Extension, yes, you, you can figure out what are these files, by the way. That, that's the only difference. If you guys have never used it, start using it slowly, and eventually you will, you will do that, uh, believe me or not. For IntelliJ installed to untie, I'll select a little bit. Um, I mean, if you have 64-bit, I would recommend using 64-bit operating, 64-bit uh, softwares, okay? Uh, should not be a problem, but if you are installing uh, Java 64-bit, IntelliJ 32-bit, you might end up some problems. Uh, it's been, for me, it's been a long time using 32-bit. Any of the software is 32-bit, okay? So if you can install the 64-bit, go ahead and do that. Okay, so uh, last thing what we did is, um, this is... I created a folder known as development. Under that, I've got GitHub. Under that, I've got patch 33. Okay. So last thing what I did is uh, I created a simple Java Java program also. So what does that Java program uh, looks like? Uh, so let's say I'm going to remove everything. Okay. So RM in the sense remove. You will eventually understand all these uh, commands and all. Uh, can you explain what is 32-bit and 64-bit? Well, uh, Ruxara 34-bit uh, and 64-bit. So there are different operating systems. Okay, so those, those are pretty much on the operating system world. Uh, when you uh, install any, any operating system, let's say Windows uh, initially was coming with 32-bit operating system. Okay, so now we we are somewhere in the world of 64-bit operating system. It's pretty much more faster than your 32-bit operating system. Okay, so that's all I can say right now, but yeah, mostly every software, every laptop or machine comes with 64-bit operating system by default. Okay, uh, nothing to do with Java, by the way. It's pretty much on the operating system world. Um, okay. All right, uh, uh, PWD, PWD in a sense, present working directory. And again, these are 
not something you needed for Java. Some miscellaneous things, even though you don't get it today, I have uh, no intention of explaining you because eventually you will get it all this thing. Okay, but uh, something is like suppose you are here, right? So assuming I'm doing it, doing it clear, so you do not know where you are now. If you go to the Finder or your Windows Explorer in your uh, Windows machine or so, you know where you are, right? You say, okay, this is in, I mean the downloads. If I go inside, let's say uh, DVD rental, I know that uh, somewhere in your Windows Explorer, I can figure out that where exactly I am, right? By you would be having a uh, toolbar wherein you can say or the address wherein you can at least say where you are. Or if I right click on this and say uh, get info. I can uh, figure out like where exactly this file is present, right? It, it is in your uh, user JRoute uh, downloads. I can know, right? But in your command prompt, how do I know where, where I am? I do not know anything about it, right? So what I can do is I can just say PWD. It says something like, what is my present working directory? So it will tell me the complete path where I am, okay? So uh, just think about you, just wake up, uh, open up your eyes and you are somewhere in the world I did not know anything about it, right? All you do is, uh, in order to figure out where you are, you just open up your phone, which is a smartphone. Then you can figure out that where exactly you are, right? You need some device to do that. So PWD is a device for me to do, uh, to figure out where I am, okay? All right. So what I can do is, I can uh, write a program. Um, now, <clears throat> You, you can write a program in different ways. Uh, I will kind of show you how to write it not using a command uh, command prompt or some editor. I would use something as a notepad or a sublime text. So if you guys are from Windows world, uh, for sure you would be having a software known as notepad, N-O-T-E-P-A-D, okay? Notepad, so again, Depending on uh, which operating system you're using, uh, if you're using Windows, you would be having a notepad. If you're using, uh, anyone who's Unix using Linux-based folks, operating system right now? I don't see any yeses. So I would assume that everyone are using Windows operating system. Right? Okay. So in a Windows, you would be having something as a notepad. Uh, I would recommend you to download a software known as Sublime Text. Okay? So this is a Sublime Text, a text editor, a simple text editor. Okay? You would not eventually use this, but it's a good to have it one. Believe me or not, uh, but yes, yeah, good to have one. Okay? Now, um, it's an external software. And as I said, you can, you don't have to have this one. You can also install something as a notepad plus plus or a notepad, which you already have it by the way, Windows comes by default with notepad. So as I said, before to open up a command prompt, likewise the same thing, you press on your command uh, Windows key and just type in notepad, okay? And then whatever comes up with a name notepad, just enter on that. Then you would coming, you would be, uh, you can see a kind of a screen. If mine is a black one. You would see a white color uh, notepad. Okay, so that's all I have it to have to say now. If you do that, practically you will figure out what I'm talking about. Okay, so in that. Start typing in this one. I mean, if you are curious enough to type in, do that uh, today, or you can watch my video and do it again. This is a public class. Um, hello world. Okay. And uh, if you're using Notepad, the basic software which comes with Windows, you cannot see. Uh, yeah, we can use text file, yes. Yeah, we can use text file in Mac. I think I have not installed it, um, but yeah, you can use it. I'll show you, like, 
if you use something like a sublime text, the one which I'm using it, I can give a color to it. So SS syntax Java. So see this, the beautiful color came in picture. But in case of a notepad, if you're using it, these colors will not be visible to you, right? So I would just say public static void me. Okay, I'm getting some pop-ups, some, some suggestions like the way when you type in anything in your Google, you get suggestions. The same thing, I'm getting some suggestions also, right? So I would just system dot out dot println. Just say, hello, guys. Okay, now, when you type in something in your notepad, or if you can download uh, this software, Sublime Text. So this is known as Sublime Text. Okay, it's pretty easy to download it. The way you guys uh, download all the other softwares here. Sublime Text Download, okay? So just click on this. And you would see, depending on uh, what operating system you have, it'll just uh, you can you need to click on those um, links accordingly. So Windows 64-bit, uh, Linux, blah blah blah, right? So I'm not worried about uh, whether you guys can do it or not. I know you guys can do it. If you have any problems, well, Google it. Keep googling it. Okay. So uh, this is one important feature or or skill which I recommend all my students understand how Google works. If you have any questions, ask Google, right? Any any technical questions wherein no one is there, right? I'm not there. I, I'm, I'm here to talk about how to walk, right? And then, well, once you know how to walk, there are hills, right? Uh, there are some slopes. You have to figure out how to walk, right? So that's that's important. So I can explain you guys how to walk. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to explain you how to do programming. Now, after that, the path will be all yours, right? So understanding this concept is very important, guys, okay? All right, so this is one other software which you have to download it. I mean, it's not compulsory, but I would recommend you guys to do this. And it's it's pretty pretty good one, actually, okay? Now, uh, depending on what you're typing, you can even change the programs also. Let's say SS Python, right? So this is pretty much looks like Python. So uh, once you download this one, I can explain you like how this works. Uh, I'm using command shift P to change the colors actually. SS set syntax as Java. Okay, so it has got different syntaxes. Uh, if you're type writing some Python program, you can see something similar to the Python, uh, how you look into the Python colors, right? So this is like a Java colors. These are all keywords. There's a reason it is in blue color. These are like class names. These are like key uh, words again. These are in different colors, okay? So we'll talk more about it, but the main objective is to tell you here that it it visualize, you can visualize that uh, these are some special uh, things, okay? All right. So once you type in or write something out here, right? So you just do a con um, control S or let's say file, save. You want to save this file, right? So when you save this file, it is going to ask you for a location where you want to save it, right? So that's for, uh, that's a typical behavior of any command uh, Windows uh, or any application, right? If you type in something in a text pad, you want to save it, it is going to ask you for a location where to save it and what name you want to save it for. So remember that uh, whatever the name of the file here, hello world, H capital W capital, you have to type in the same name, H E H L L. L L O W O R L D. Okay. And you can kind of save it anywhere, wherever you want. Make sure the name of the file is same as the name of the class here. And uh, you can save it anywhere. But I have chosen a path that is batch 33. I would just save it there itself. Okay. So you guys know, I think I don't have to tell about how to save a file in likewise. Right. So let's save this file. And this file is saved. And uh, you don't have to purchase this. Uh, so from now, if I type in one extra dot, I just say Control S or Command S or just say File, Save. I don't have to save it again, right? Um, 
no i mean i don't have, it, it's not ask me for a pop up again and again one time i save it with a name on a particular location it's no no more going to ask me anything right but technically if i come here and say ls you can see the same file here again as i said this is a notepad type something save it so for example again uh i would say good morning guys right so this is not a java program but just a file i want to save it now what name you want to save it i would just say messag.txt any name any uh, so well if you are in this programming world or if you know how to use a software or a, or a, or a, or a, or a uh computer you know what is a text file right so you type in something in the text file so i would like to save this content in a text file so when i do it save now i come here and see that i got two files now one is hello world.java one is message.txt so the same thing this is the same text file okay so what next uh, so i have written this java program i want to run this program so all i have to do java hello world.java See that when I run this program, I get hello guys. So this is the same thing what I have printed out here. Hello guys with one, two, three, four, five dots. The same thing I'm able to see it here as well. Okay, if you want to type or print something, uh, some, the current date also, you can just say system. So again, remember this: Java is very much case sensitive. I cannot type in s as in small s y s t e m. It is not going to work out. Out dot print ln okay so i would just say something as new java.util.a don't worry about all these things we'll talk about it but this is this is not going to work out if i try to run the same program it tells me that there's a uh, problem we see it is a compilation problem actually i know that s is uh, supposed to be cap capital letter so i would go back to the program and just make it as a capital letter out here okay and then come here command prompt run it okay so why you cannot run it here there are options to do it uh, to run it from the uh, from the sublime text also but use the command prompt in order to run the program so here you are able to write the program and here you are running the program okay in order to run the program you will say java hello world something is wrong in the machine is anyone hacking my machine i'm not sure but yeah uh, java hello world dot java when you do that you would pretty much get a uh, output whatever you have written inside this here okay here here all these things you would be getting as an output not all these things right do you see something as public class hello world do you see public static void we'll talk about about talk about all these things what are these things uh, but not today but you can see that right what are you writing it inside this is what you're getting it outside i mean to the to the uh, output of the program right so um any questions folks till now this was a very simple hello world program you can write a number of programs uh, eventually we will see that how to do it but as of now um this is a very basics. I think this is what even I spoke about in the previous session also uh, on how to write a Java program, basic Java program. Or uh, you can just print in hello world. So this is a tradition, right? Whenever we learn anything new, the very first thing we do is type hello world. There's a tradition here in programming world. H E L L O, right? So I would suggest you guys to do that. Here we go. Uh, how did you get your Sublime Text to complete your words? Uh, so it is automatic. Okay. So once you download the Sublime Text uh, and start typing in, it'll take care of it. The only thing is you have to you have to tell the Sublime Text. That what kind of syntax is this? So it's something like Control Shift P in your case, and type in what syntax you are. Right? I would say set syntax. I can type in set syntax, but shortcut is S S. 
Java. Okay, so it, it's pretty beautiful editor, guys. It's, I would always recommend all of you to use this one um, because it's, it's, it saves a lot of things, a lot of time, and uh, you would use this a lot more. You can see like, every single uh, programming uh, language, you, let's say SS React, right, or regular expression, ER lang, HTML, so let's say SS HTML, right? So it comes with some a lot of different syntax styles. Um, whenever you want any kind of programming language, you can start using this one. Okay, so uh, you can use this. And uh, what else? Well, yeah, there are so many different other softwares, guys. Okay, so but again, I would recommend this to use for this session at least. I use every time in my in my work as well. Uh, I have installed this on my Linux based machine uh, as well as on my Windows. Okay, so yeah. Any questions, guys? Uh, so if it is not working, I let's let's do this. Uh, do this. Um, what is that? Preference. Um, I don't know how the Windows works, by the way. I think it's uh, just Google it again, right? Just Google it how to change the syntax uh, in Sublime Text, right? In Windows. Let's say, come here. Now, uh, how to change syntax in Sublime Text 3. Let's say Windows. Right, so this is again our skill comes in handy. Um, so change syntax. So it says uh, do, 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 do. command shift P is in uh, Windows operating system. Sorry, this is in Mac. Let's see what do they, what do they say in Windows. Um, to, 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 to view syntax open blah 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 well, it's talking about yeah so what I would do is I would just come here and say in Windows right yeah you get a whole tutorial by the way to understand about this uh, but yeah so you'll figure it out I believe right it's control shift P I'm sure about that uh, try that, okay? There are multiple different options, by the way, but I know it's it's Control Shift P uh, in order to change your syntax, okay? But yeah, uh, yeah, there are a lot of videos also. You can figure it out how to do it, right? Not much worried about that. Uh, so there's a question coming in. Uh, no, I'm using Windows. Uh, I have eight version already installed and running. Would this work? Yes, Nick, it should work. It, it will work, in fact, because we would uh, mainly discuss about Java 8 features because that's where most of the features came in. Uh, so if you have JDK 8, stick with that. No problems. If you st still want to upgrade it to JDK, let's say 14 or 13, you can do that also, but it's okay for you to stick to that. Okay. All right. Um, the next thing what I was talking about in the previous session is uh, go to this github.com. 